Well, I think it is an occupational hazard coming from somewhere cold to Miami in February. In fact, so much so that I came for a conference last year and at that moment in time, I lived in New York City and I loved it so much that I moved to Miami. Um, and as of last week, uh, uh, I'm just fully, fully ensconced um, in the McKinsey office in Miami. So I'm very, very excited to be a new member of this community. I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, the work I'm going to share with you, which is we've been deeply looking at what does the future of work look like, and in particular, what is the impact of automation, artificial intelligence, and other technologies on the nature of work, and what might it mean for people around the country. And a couple of years ago, we did a big piece of work which looked at the level of displacement. In other words, how many people might be displaced from their jobs. Um, as a result of this. Um, what we have done since is say, well, it's interesting to know what's going on on the national level, but it's far more interesting to know what's going on in cities and in counties, like at every single city and every county in America. So let me start and jump right in and start by saying the thing that the research showed to us is that America truly is a very complex mosaic of local communities. So let me show you just how complex it is. What we did is we took all 3,069 counties, um, all 315 cities over a certain size, and we used um, uh, some statistical methods to categorize every one of these places based on their economic health, the business dynamism, the industry mix, and the labor market characteristics. And we came up with 13 different segments, or really five broad categories of city. And let me briefly take you through them. One is the urban core. Um, and these include mega cities like Atlanta, Chicago, Miami, New York, um, a group of cities we call the high growth hubs, which are places that you'll be familiar with, Austin, Charlotte, Denver, Nashville, Raleigh. And collectively, these are 25 cities, and they account for about 30% of the population. They have the industries are high tech, media, healthcare, real estate, finance. Um, and these typically are places which have high incomes, uh, faster employment growth, high net migration, um, but actually lots of congestion and affordable housing issues as well. The next set of places are what we've called the periphery or the urban periphery. There are about 270 counties that um, are the extended suburbs of the major US cities. They're about 15% of the population. A lot of people are moving here and many people who move here are working in the nearby big cities. And a lot of what's going on in these places is healthcare, retail, logistics, and local services. Then there are a series of different kinds of cities. We've called them the niche cities. They're small powerhouse cities. There are college-centric towns. There are silver cities, which are retirement communities. And then there's a group of 180 cities, which we'll call the mixed middle. Um, they're stable, um, cities like Cincinnati and St. Louis. They're smaller independent economies like Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or Winston-Salem in, Salem in North Carolina. And then down the bottom, you'll see a group of low growth and rural areas. There are a group of about 50-odd um, trailing cities. Think of Flint, Michigan, Bridgeport, Connecticut. They're former industrial towns with declining economies. And then there are a series of rural counties um, which have some combination of very flat or negative job growth. Um, they tend to be older, have higher unemployment, and lower educational attainment. So what you see here is a picture that's not as simple as urban-rural, not as simple as coasts versus the heartland, and not as simple as a kind of a regional story. So that is the complex mosaic that makes up America. And the one thing I will show you is if you look at the period since the Great Recession, you can see what a great divergence of economic dynamism there is and economic vitality in these different places. Um, this peacock chart, as I like to say now that I live in Coconut Grove and we have a peacock infestation, <laughs> um, if you look at this peacock chart, it shows that certain cities, let's take the high growth hubs, the high growth hubs have gained 14% 
jobs above the level they started at before the Great Recession in 2007. So if they had 100 jobs before the Great Recession, they now have 114. But if you look further down, there are two categories called Americana and Distressed Americana. Americana are more or less just recovered to where they were 12 years ago. And Distressed Americana have not yet recovered from the Great Recession. They're actually down about 6 or 7% in terms of jobs that they had before the Great Recession. And so this is the starting point um, we're sort of looking at. So the question is, what are we talking about when we're talking about automation and the impact of, uh, and how it's impacting work? Well, the first thing I would say is, this is actually not mostly about all jobs going away. The big lesson we learned is that it's not that a huge chunk of jobs are going to go away, it's that most jobs will be transformed. In other words, when we did our analysis, we found that 60% of occupations have at least 30% of the tasks that could be automated, meaning the very character of most of these jobs will be transformed. So this is less a story of jobs going away and more a story of the jobs in the economy being transformed. And if you look by sector, you can see how different this is. Obviously, the, the industries which have um, the greatest portion of activities that could be automated are manufacturing, accommodation and food services, and retail. So we did some analysis which looked at which of the jobs are most likely to be displaced. And what we found is that between now and 2030, there might be 39 million jobs that could be displaced. But over half of those are in office support, food service, production jobs, which are manufacturing, and customer service. And you can see that the big squares or rectangles, which are the ones where most jobs will be lost, are also highly correlated with jobs in which the fewest people have college degrees. So that's where the burden of automation is likely to fall. Now the impact is also will also vary by demographic group. What we found is that if you're in a job with only a high school degree, you're four times more likely to be in a job that could be displaced. That up to 12 million people in Hispanic and African American communities could find themselves in a situation of job displacement, largely because of lower educational attainment levels. We also found that maybe 15 million young people could find jobs they're in being displaced. And this is particularly tricky. Traditionally, young people have relied on food service and retail as stepping stones into the labor force. What happens when those jobs get automated? And equally, there is a specific challenge for workers over the age of 50. As we saw in the Great Recession, those workers tended to take the longest to get re-employed, and when they did, it was often at lower wage levels. So I'm going to skip ahead and just show you what I think are a couple of very, very powerful charts. Previously, I showed you what happened from 2007 to now. I'm now going to show you a picture of our projection through 2030. Our projection for net job growth, you can see as indicated here, the bluer it is, the greater the projected job growth. And what we found is that the 25 urban areas I mentioned before, which are the mega cities and the high growth hubs, are likely to account for 60% of net job creation through 2030. 60% of net jobs in America will be in just 25 cities. And all the gray and light gray represent 2,000 counties where in about 1,000 of the counties there might be 1% job growth. Not 1% a year, but 1% over the next decade. And another 1,000 counties are projected to have 3% job decline. So what we have is a very granular and nuanced tale of a very complex mosaic which represents the American economy. And I'll simply say now as I transition to the panel that this is a projection of one possible future. It does, it's not necessarily destiny. So with that, I'm going to turn to our panel.